Yo, what's up guys? So I haven't made this video in a while, but I decided today, why not? It's a good day to make a video about the best settings in Rocket League for 2024. So every single year I try to make a video on what I think are the best settings or the best range for settings that you should try. And this year it changed quite a bit actually. It's actually something that's uh, happening that hasn't happened in previous years and we're actually seeing a trend toward this certain setting and I'll, I'll speak on that in a sec. Let's get into the free play and I'll show you guys. Starting off with camera settings, the most important part for camera settings, I wanna get straight into it. The most important thing that is the same all across the board between all pros that I've seen is FOV is 110. There is very, very few examples now of 109 FOV. This used to be more prominent last year. So you would have seen me speak about players using 109 FOV, but Nowadays, I don't really see 109 used much, so I would just stick strictly on 110. Don't bother with 109 or 108, but if you are gonna use anything in this range, the lowest I'd go is 108. Don't go any lower. You wanna make sure you have as much FOV as possible. That is something that all players have come to the conclusion is the best. Going on to distance now, this is where you probably see most of the difference in range. There's a player in Europe named Seiko, who's usually pretty solid. At all events that he plays in, he usually places pretty well and his distance is i think 240 or 230 it's as low as 230 i think at times he's had in the past but you see all the way from 230 all the way up until 300 but the most common range and the average range you should stick in is 270. it gives you a good view of your car and of the field around you and you want to make sure that you're seeing as much of the field as possible you want to see left and right because information is extremely valuable in this game having information of where your opponent is where your teammates are is super valuable and making sure you always try to keep that in mind when you're playing is super important so i have settings that help you in in doing that properly height now this is something that i've settled on and i think personally that 80 or 90 height is going to be the future over 100. i think 100 and 110 is going to slowly slowly move its way out of the game right now you're seeing more players use 90 and 100 than 110. i would say the older the older range used to be 90 to 110 right now it's probably still 90 to 110 but you're seeing way less people on 110 110 is like almost not used anymore there's a very few examples in europe that use 110 still almost none in na that use 110 um so i would say if you're going to use anything for height use 90 or 100 but i do think eventually this will trend down toward 80. i think the reason for this is because it helps with uh feeling consistent for like resets for some reason when you're going for resets on lower height you have a little bit of a better idea of where the ball is actually ending up in the air so you can see right here like i mean that was like a great example a great great first example there there was actually no cut between me switching to 80 and, and doing that but you have a little bit of a better view of what's happening with the ball when you're about to make contact with the bottom of your car so i would highly recommend going uh, trending toward that lower height so i would use 90 or 80. i'm gonna i'm gonna leave it on 80 for now because that felt nice but uh, i'm switching between these two settings lately and I'm mostly using 90. My world championship winning settings, I use 90, negative 5.4. And a lot of players are using around this range now. So I think I kind of had an idea of what would be good back then, and I should have stuck on it. Honestly, I switched so much back and forth, but most players are kind of settling on this kind of range, but I'll keep going through. So 90 or 80 is what I'm gonna play on, starting from now into like going forward. Very few players use 110 now, but there's still quite a few on 100. Most are on 90 or 100, so stay between this range in my opinion. And I would mess with 80 and see how you feel about it. But also adjust your angle accordingly when you mess with your height, because it does help make it feel better. Um, but for example, Zen's on 100, negative three, it's a very common setting. If you're gonna use 100, use negative three or negative five, in my opinion, that's that's the best settings. If you're gonna use 100, if you're using 90, use negative four or negative five for 90. And if you're gonna use 80, I would go even as far as say use negative six or negative five. So we're gonna stay on 90 for now. For angle, like I said, you use angle in tandem with your height. So mess with the settings accordingly, but the range is negative five to negative three. For the most part, most people are using, like I said, 90 to 100 or negative five to negative three with those, those height changes. So I'm using negative five right now, but it's completely up to you to mess with something that feels good between height and angle. But this is what I like to use at the moment. Stiffness is, isn't actually on what I usually use. So this is the setting that I was speaking on that's trending toward being lower. Back in the past, I would say this range for usable stiffness was anywhere between, I would say the range was like, it was like 45, 40 or 45, all the way up until 
like 70 or 75. That was the range that you see most players playing between. Now you're seeing players go as low as 0.15 and you're seeing players very often use the most common stiffness you're seeing now out of very mechanical pro players is 0.35 and this is what I'm currently using. But if you see me change this, I'm going down. I'm not going up. And you can see a very obvious difference. If I, if I switch this to like 75 and I move around and I drift, right? You see how when I'm drifting around how it looks. And if I move this down to what I'm usually using, 0.35, and I drift around, you'll see how there's more of like a wiggle to it. It feels a lot better. It feels a lot more smooth. And it feels feels nice. It looks nice. And, and that's the main thing. You want your game to look look nice as well right you don't want it to just feel good you want it to also look good and i think this is a good balance for both and it gives you a good level of vision of the field once you go once you go supersonic you're actually seeing more that's how stiffness works it zooms your camera out more so when i'm when i'm slow speed this is where my car is and then when i'm supersonic you can see it actually zooms out even more so my distance becomes more i actually have more view of the field which helps quite a bit whereas if i max this out you can actually see it when i'm supersonic in the background you see how it zooms in my camera it's a small difference but it actually makes a big difference in the way the game feels so i recommend keeping this on 0.35 i think that's a the golden spot for stiffness right now is staying on the lower half but i would stay between i would genuinely recommend to stay between probably 0.25 to like 0.45 at most now but there's still some players using higher it's not it's not wrong to use higher but i think it's trending toward lower and you're seeing the best players the tears the zens daniel stuff like that like using this lower stiffness right now transition speed swivel speed is completely up to you this is how fast your your camera can move around in my opinion i've been i've been getting used to 10 swivel speed can use the high the highest sense possible for this because if someone's on my back left i can quickly flick around to see like i can see almost fully behind me i can actually have a 360 view around me basically if I use this and I flick quickly left and right. So I decided to try to get used to higher. There's not that many players that use it higher. Some players have it really low. This is completely preference. I think there's a massive range here. But I recommend having this on a higher end personally because like I said, information is very valuable. If you're dribbling the ball and you lost someone, you can quickly do that, see them and then go for your flick, right? It's really important to see over the ball. Get good at being able to dribble and like look over the ball because it does help. And as soon as someone goes for the challenge, you can drop it out of your car, for example, get the 50. So it's really valuable to have that and uh, be comfortable using that setting. Transition speed at 1.4 for me personally. This this range is usually between 1 and 1.4. This is the common range. I'm using the high end of this again because I think information is vital and it's becoming more and more important. So being able to go for this boost if I need to, go back to the ball, get back off really quickly without it feeling like... You don't want it to be too snappy where it gives you a headache. We also don't want it to be too slow where you're missing out on like important fractions of a second that actually do end up mattering and they do end up adding them. So make sure that you have this on a setting that you feel comfortable with. Again, these final settings are, are mostly preference. There is no setting here that's gonna make you feel way better. But in my opinion, having this to be snappier helps you with uh, that quick information that you'll be getting. As for sensitivity, that's it for camera settings. Just make sure you have camera shake off, by the way. That's a, a quick thing that I forgot to mention. And inverted swivel is completely up to you. Some people like to have it inverted, I don't. So I just have that off, doesn't really matter. Steering sensitivity, I have mine 1.3. The range here is, is pretty wide, it's pretty wide. And, and again, these settings go in tandem with your controller dead zone. So if you're gonna raise these settings up super high, so for example, some Middle Eastern players that are really good have this on 2.9. If you're using 2.9 for these settings for both, you're gonna wanna raise your controller dead zone because this on 0 0.05 is gonna be super sensitive. But if you up your controller dead zone, this is now not as sensitive, it's gonna feel more controllable. So. If you're using higher sense, use a higher controller dead zone. It does help quite a bit, so definitely mess with that. Zen, for example, is using 1.5 on both with 0 0.07 here, which is pretty similar in feeling, in my opinion, to what I usually use, which is 0 0.05 and 1.3 both. It's pretty similar in feeling. And once you use aerial right a lot, this is what I recommend using aerial right or left binds. Your aerial sense is essentially 10 when you're air rolling right or left. I've done some tests on this. It's basically as fast as 10 aerial sense if you're using aerial left or right. So that's why it looks like people are spinning so fast if you're watching pros. Yeah, so I would recommend 1.3, 1.3, 0 0.05, 0 0.7 for a good starting sense. It feels good, feels fast, but it also feels controllable. And that's the most important thing. Make sure you have something that's consistent and controllable. As for dodge dead zone, the range is pretty wide. Again, you have some players using as low as 0.15, some players using as high as 0.8. And it's really up to you and how broken in your controllers are, how new your controller is. Depends on a lot of things. I like 0.7. I think it's a very good 
dead zone just to like feel comfortable and not messing up your double jumps and your faster heroes and stuff like that so this is just what i recommend this these settings i'm not going to speak too much on because these ones are very preference but i will say the average especially in na is is basically 1.3 1.3 0.05 0.7 this is extremely common in na i would say the majority of players are using around this sensitivity in na in europe you're seeing 1.5 be the most common and 0.07 because most people are copying Zen. And then in the Middle East, you're seeing 2.9, 2.9, 0 0.09, because most people are copying TRK. So you're seeing people copy like one player from the region and kind of stick to it. This sense was used by all of Prime Energy when we were playing extremely well, everyone copied this. So it kind of just like made its way down to the best players now, which is Daniel's using this now. And this is why people are copying this, still using this. I haven't switched off this really. If I change my sense at all, I go up to 1.4. And if I'm feeling like too fast, I go down to 1.3, but I stay in this range. 1.3 or 0.4 feels super good to me. And this is what I'd recommend. As for controls, again, this is all personal preference. For me, all I change is I have my power slide and air roll on L1. I have my air roll right on square. I have it double bound with R1 as well. So if you see me pressing R1, it's also my air roll right button. I did that in the Steam files. It just feels comfortable for me to have both. And it helps with certain mechanics, but I don't want to touch on that too much right now. It's just how I play. So this is actually bound on R1 and on square for me. I recommend having one of air roll right or left. You don't need both. As long as you have one and regular air roll, you're fine. If you want, you can also just have arrow right and left and not have regular arrow. It's good to have one of these though. You want to have one. I think if you don't have one, you're going to be left behind in the next few years because it's very important to learn this mechanic. Learning how to actually get comfortable in the air with that is very important. So score, but I have on share. It would usually be on R1, right? Or square. So I, I switched this to share just to have an extra spot. And going down, I didn't change anything else really. I think that's basically it. Yeah, and my reset shots on L3. So when I'm in training, if you see me accidentally reset my shot because I accidentally press L3, it's pretty rare that, that happens, but that's the only thing there that I would maybe change to something else because I can make a mistake on that. But it's in training, it doesn't really matter. And I, it really ever affects me. Interface, so this is something that I changed recently and I think is very important. Not a lot of players have done this, but I would recommend you guys do this. So they added a change where with the nameplate scale, um, you could see your teammates boost, right? And it's actually pretty small. It's a really important change, but it's pretty small by default. If you use a hundred nameplate scale, it's pretty hard to see. I cranked this to 200 and it makes it super easy to see and it's super vital information to know how much boost your teammate has and, and try to work around that. Definitely stay focused on how much boost your teammate has and don't forget to pay attention to that because it's a super vital thing in the game they added. And I think people are kind of forgetting that it's a, a feature in the game. I see some teammates that, um, will take someone's boost when they're about to go for it with no boost and they have full like stuff like that you can tell some people are forgetting about it um so make sure you're keeping that in mind and i would raise this to just try to remind yourself that it's really important and it helps it helps a lot to pay attention to that boost meter everything else here you can copy what i have this is the common for most players except for team colored boost meter i like to have mine on red so bottom right it's red um, if i do team colored boost meter for free play it would turn white i believe but in game it would be blue, yeah. It would be blue or orange in game. Obviously, whatever team you're on. But I like to have it on red, it's just the OG in me. Feels good, feels right. Ball arrow, I think it's very important to have on when your ball comes off. If you get disoriented, you can tell where the ball is really quick. You should obviously always have an idea, but you don't know if there's a second you turn off the ball cam, it could get pinched 50 somehow. And you wanna make sure you know where that is if you do lose track of it, so I do recommend having that on. For video, I have everything lowest. This is the common amongst all pros. The only thing that would change here is world detail on high quality. And the reason for this is you get multiple ball trails. So if I absolutely bang the ball here, see how there's multiple ball trails following that? There's like four or five of them. If I turn that off, and I bang the ball the same way. Let me, let me set up a bang. You can already see one ball trail, but if I hit it quick, hold on. See how there's only one trail following it? So yeah, I would recommend not messing with your video settings too much outside of this setting. And the reason the reason why I'd recommend changing this setting is sometimes it can feel good to go for like double taps and like reading the ball and like where you think it's gonna go next. It's a little bit easier sometimes with multiple ball trails, but I think it is obviously a placebo thing. And you don't need it at all. But yeah, that's the only thing I would change. If I change anything here, it's gonna be world detail to high quality. Everything else, this is my refresh rate on my monitor right now, so I'm using this. Borderless I'm using because I'm having issues with streaming. Uh, when I'm streaming on Twitch, by the way, if you guys wanna watch me, go check out Twitch. I'm having a 24 hour stream coming up pretty soon. So if you guys wanna watch me play other games that aren't Rocket League as well, on top of the Rocket League during that stream, definitely come check it out. Twitch.tv slash Squishy Muffins. I hope to see you guys there. Definitely say hi. Don't be afraid to have a conversation with me, man. Ask me any questions you want. I always, I always answer every single question in chat, so. 
definitely come out. But yeah, this is why I have it on borderless. This should be a full screen for all of you. Um, if you're not having any issues, definitely go full screen. It's so much better. Audio, I'm using 21, 20, everything else off. I don't want any other distractions. And this is good for my PC and my headphones. Different for everybody else, but you can copy these exact settings. Chat, everything, whatever you want to copy here, you can. This is basically all default though. It doesn't really matter. This part, I would also just basically essentially leave default. I haven't changed too much. The only thing you change here is input buffer. I would do some research here to see what's best for how your internet is. If your internet's bad, uh, one of these can help with that. If your internet's good, one of these can help with that. I leave mine on default and I think it's fine. I've had times where my internet sucks and leaving this on default still feels like it's fine. I've had times where my internet's great and I, I can't see it being much better if you switch to one of these settings. So I think default's probably the, the sweet spot, but if you have an issue with your internet, I would look into these settings because it may help you. So that's the only thing I recommend out of this screen, but everything else you should just copy unless you're obviously not in the US East region for your tournaments. Training. The only thing here, guys, I would recommend messing with slow-mo. So slow-mo is actually a really important tool. I don't know if my slow-mo is going to work. This slow-mo can be a little glitchy. There we go. You have to activate sometimes, but... I know it looks weird and it might sound weird, but practicing on slow-mo actually can help you get down like some pretty difficult mechanics doing it for the first time. It can help you understand a little bit better, the timing of it, whatever it may be, like it can help you quite a bit. And also there's a lot of players, and this is an old trick, but there's a lot of players that still free play in slow-mo so that if you free play in slow-mo for like five to 10 minutes, I'm not gonna do it during this video obviously, but if you free play in slow-mo for like five to 10 minutes, it's a, it's a trick to get rid of your quote unquote heavy car bug i know there's a thing that a lot of people talk about but like sometimes your car just feels bad randomly and that is kind of a placebo in itself but you you're counter placeboing it by playing slow-mo and it sounds crazy but you counter placebo by playing slow-mo and it actually by the end of your slow-mo session you will feel way faster so if i turn off slow-mo just now for example it's already going to feel a lot faster a lot more responsive it's going to feel like your controller is like listening to you a lot better even though it's the exact same as before but you know, it's, it's, a nice, it's a nice little trick to kind of snap out of your funk if you're feeling weird one day. So definitely mess with uh, slow-mo there. That's a really important tip. And that's all for today's video, guys. That's all I'm really going to touch upon. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped you out. And if you have any questions, down below in the comments. I will definitely take a look. I'll try to answer whatever you guys have for me. But I love you guys. Thank you so much for the support and channel, as always. Be sure to leave a like if you did enjoy the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys all in the next one. I love you all.